Nonprofits these days are failing. There are just simply not enough grants and donations to go around and support all of the organizations that are doing great work. Well, I want to explain how the online marketing industry might be able to save our nonprofits. Now, this is a very informal video. I just want to describe the process for you. So, to back up, my name is James Archer. I'm the founder of the ShareLingo Project. It's a social enterprise based here in Denver, Colorado. And we help English and Spanish speakers connect and practice with each other. Now, one of the things that we have stumbled upon is that we have been able to start helping some nonprofits through this. So, to explain this to you, I really have to back up a little bit and do two things. I have to um, outline the situation with how the online marketing industry normally works and uh, then I have to look at the problem for nonprofits and how that relates and how these two things can come together, how it can be mutually beneficial and how it can really help our society. So if you're an online marketer and you're looking to build your list and grow your sales and also do some good work you want to watch this. And if you are a nonprofit who is struggling for money, and I don't know any nonprofit that's not, you want to watch this also. And I hope that what's going to happen is the two sides are going to be able to connect with the information in this video and help each other. So let me get started. All right, so in the traditional, which is really n pretty new, um, online marketing world, this is what happens. So. We begin in online marketing with uh, building a list. Now that's usually through paid advertising. And so we do Google AdWords or we do Facebook ads or whatever. And somehow we build a list with a squeeze page or whatever we have, maybe a free lead magnet, okay? So then what happens is after you have a list, you drive traffic to register, normally for, for, for some free stuff, free training. Now, as I start talking about the nonprofits, this is really important that you have free training. And I'll explain why when we get to the nonprofit side. All right? So you have some great, valuable free training that you give to people in your list. And you build up your reputation as being an expert uh, and that you're good at what you do. And through the free training, you then, at the end of it, offer these people more more value and um, superior training and something that they really need. And you usually give them a great offer. So you're giving them a lot of value for this. And then they buy your stuff and then they get whatever it is that you're selling. That might be a course or a membership, it could be a book or pretty much anything that you're selling. But this funnel situation uh, is what online marketers use in order to make sales. All right. Now, hopefully what happens is you make money, right? And then you might donate some of that money to nonprofits and then you feel good. Okay. I want to help explain to the online marketers why it's in your best interest to, instead of supporting the nonprofits at the end, to support the nonprofits at the beginning. All right. I'm going to do that. Now, before I connect the two dots, I want to talk about the nonprofits. So nonprofits today have problems, all right? New nonprofits are starting every day, but we're not seeing new donors uh, cropping up every day ready to just give more money. And so nonprofits are struggling. And something that I've been preaching is that nonprofits really need to create a social enterprise model. And basically what that means is instead of asking for grants and donations, and relying on those, they need to have something they can sell to earn revenue. Now, there's several benefits to this, right? Grants and donations are often tied, handcuffed, to a particular cause. So somebody might say, oh, uh, you help women in trouble. All right, well, here's my $1,000, but I want it to go to the women in trouble. All right. So then the nonprofit <clears throat> doesn't have money to pay for the air conditioning or the overheads or salary or um, you know, the broken vehicle. The thing about earning money is that um, 
it's more reliable than the grants and donations. You don't have to fill out some huge long grant request and then wait six months. You earn the money. And the money's not handcuffed. It's money you can use for whatever you need it for. The problem is, in order to earn that money, you have to have something you can sell. It must be either a product, like Girl Scout cookies, or it must be a service that you can provide. Well, a lot of nonprofits don't have the upfront capital to create something they can sell. So, they are stuck asking for grants and donations. Well, how do they do that? They build a list of members and supporters that believe in their cause, and they reach out to their members and supporters and ask for donations. Or they go to the government to ask for grants. All right, here's how these two sides can come together help each other and solve this problem, hopefully forever. So, one of the big problems for the online marketers is building a list. One of the only assets that nonprofits have is a list. Let's put them together. Think about this. Online marketer, all right? You want to reach out. Let me use um, my organization as an example, okay? So, Share Lingo. Uh, is an organization where we help connect English speakers and Spanish speakers and we help them practice together. Now, one of our problems is we don't have a lot of money to do Facebook ads or Google ads or reach out to build our list. But we have a mission. We are goal-oriented and it turns out that our mission aligns with the missions of a few nonprofits. Um, we're working with Claro, Open Media, Denver Arts, uh, nonprofit organizations that need money, all right? And our, our mission aligns with their mission. It's very easy for them to say, oh, share lingo. Um, you help break down barriers. You help people be friends with each other. You help our community. I like that. We're gonna help you promote your course. All right, so we have an online course and a membership where we try and raise enough funds to um, fulfill our mission. Well, if a nonprofit like Clado or Open Media can send out a message to their list saying, hey, ShareLingo has this great program that connects English and Spanish speakers, why don't you check them out? They have some free training right now. This is important, okay? On the nonprofit list, and I don't know why this is the case. I mean, the Girl Scouts sell cookies, right? Girl Scouts don't bake their own cookies. They found a product that they could sell to make money. Now, in my mind, it's, it's better for a nonprofit to say, hey, here's something valuable, why don't you buy it, than for the nonprofit to say, hey, please donate money. But that's not the way our society works. If a nonprofit sends out an email saying, hey, buy this stuff, all right? A lot of people on their list get annoyed. Now that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. We don't like for nonprofits to sell stuff. But what can they do? They can help share an announcement about free training. It's very easy for them. So this is how this works. Online marketers, pay attention here. You want to create affiliates. Right? Affiliates are people who help you market your stuff. Affiliates are people who can help you build your list. Right? What do you normally pay an affiliate? Normally you pay affiliates 40 or 50 percent of the revenues. Now here's what I'm suggesting. How about instead of going to normal affiliates, how about you go to nonprofits and you offer them an affiliate relationship? And I'll tell you what, we have done 30% affiliate fee, and we call that a pledge, all right? We are pledging 30% of the revenues that come from that nonprofit to the nonprofit. Now, the nonprofit is ecstatic with that number because they're used to getting 1%, 2%, 3%. If it's a church, maybe they get a tithe for 10%. Nobody ever gives them 30%, okay? So if you're offering a 30% affiliate fee to the nonprofits, they're going to do handsprings. And you are going to be lowering your affiliate fees. 
This is good, right? Okay, then what happens? Well, they reach out to their members and supporters and they offer a good, valuable, free training. Those people go into the funnel, they follow the free training, and then at the end of the free training, right, that's when it's our job as online marketers to transition them from the free to the paid, right? That's our job. That's not the nonprofit's job. That's our job as online marketers. And if we're successful, some of this money that comes in from the course or book or membership that we're selling is going to go automatically back to the nonprofit in the form of an affiliate fee. So the affiliate fees go there. You know what you're doing? Instead of bringing your feel good to the end of the process, you're putting it right here at the beginning. I can't express, okay, so you feel good right away, all right? So how's this working? Well, well, in ShareLingo, all right, we have nonprofits who are interested in hearing about this. So this is helping us create our lists without having to spend upfront money to create the lists. If there are nonprofits out there that need this kind of thing and you support diversity and inclusion, call me, all right? I'll be happy to hook you up as an affiliate. But what I hope is a bigger picture that all online marketers and all nonprofits can kind of reach out to each other and see if there's a fit. And we can possibly save a lot of the nonprofits that are currently ready to go out of business because they don't have funds. Um, this idea could save our nonprofit industry as a whole. I hope you agree. Okay, um, I'll leave it at that. I'm James Archer from the ShareLingo Project. Y nos vemos pronto. Ciao for now.